Talk to us about the uh, Indian Premier League, mate. Let's spend <clears> time uh, on on India. I mean, just just a huge fan base, but the experience of playing that in you know, for, for your first time and the auction, how does all that work? I mean, maybe focus in on the fan side of things. How, how good is it over there? Ah, uh, mate, it's like um, it's like AFL Grand Final week for the eight weeks. <laughs> if I can put it in, in in simple terms, it's yeah. absolutely mad. It's it's cricket on steroids. Um, but what it has ha- has done, it, it's changed. When I first went there about uh, eleven years ago, now um, it used to be play then party heaps, but they probably stopped about. Um, well, after the first year I was there, probably stopped three years after that, and it's fully serious now, fully committed. Um, you know, when cricket, T20 cricket hit the market, it was hit and giggle. That was the term used. Now it's a business. There's so much money involved, whether that be from a franchise team owner, whether it might be from guys but punting on it. Um, and, it's, and it's blokes' careers as well. Blokes are making a career out of it. So there's so much on the line now that it is full-time, 100% um, a business. That that first part of your IPL <clears throat> career, you're you're on lists and you're bouncing around. You didn't play a lot of games. You played one or two games in your first three years. Is that yep. um, what's the process there? Are you on a list and getting paid a wage, and you're back to your reserve, or, or what's happening? Um, yeah, so Buff picked me up when I was uh, maybe a 19 year old at the deck and charges. Played one game in two years. Yeah. The guys in front of me were Kumar Sangakara, JP Dominey, Cameron White, Dale Stain. You know, these, I'm, I'm not playing ahead of these guys unless we're bottom. I got my one opportunity because we couldn't make the finals. They just got the last game of the tournament. It's like, well, I've been on the piss for six weeks and you throw me in the last game. Come on, man. Like, I knew I wasn't going to play, so I was just training and then just doing <laughs> socialising. Um, but yeah, now, like, there's so much more rotation in the modern game, whereas back then they had their set for overseas players because um, you could only play four at the time. So, um, Oh, it's, it's whatever you want to get out of it, you can get out of it. If you want to train, work hard, which I did, but I also got the, the social side of things, you know, out of it as well. Because uh, India can be tough if you're there for, you know, longer than eight weeks, um, you know, especially being 19, not, not you know, climatised to the food, the, the drinking out bottles of water, brushing teeth with bottles of water, that was all new to me. So it took a while for me to adjust and spend a few days on the toilet here and there. But it's all part, <laughs> as I said, it's all, it's all part of the journey and um, getting to mix with the, the greats of the game. That's one thing I absolutely loved and they're some of my best mates now. Did you um did you come across I mean you must have come across some crazy wealth over there you hear about wealth disparity and stuff like that and but some of these team owners and stuff did you get invited along to some um you know crazy houses that you would have um, visited with the team Yeah so um the Kolkata Knight Riders owner Shahrukh Khan so he's a number one Bollywood actor um again just another normal person he didn't care if we win or lose just put in just all about attitude you commit, you do, you know, someone's got to win, someone's got to lose. And in T20 cricket, more likely than not, you lose by five or ten runs. You know, bugger all, one or two deliveries. So um, he was such a normal person. If we had a bad day, he would come in, give you a pat on the back and say, don't worry about it, you know, keep moving forward. And um, then when Mumbai Indians, they were owned by the um, Akash and Barney, um, and Barney family, which are the wealthiest family in India, basically run India. Great people as well, and you know their house is 20 stories high. Um, you know they've got a traffic traffic controller at the top of it. Um, you know, but again, normal people. Yes, they got a lot of dough, and um, it's quite funny. Like he said to him, he's a mad. Um, I think it's Arsenal or Liverpool, one of those. He goes, uh, I want really wanted to buy um, Arsenal. He goes, why didn't you buy it? He goes, oh, mum wouldn't let me. <laughs> I just thought that was absolutely gold. But again, normal people, treat people how you want to be treated regardless of, you know, how much cash you got or not. Um, but it was, yeah, really special to, you know, or really privileged to be a part of those change rooms and, and as you said, be lucky enough to be invited into their home. You know, you know they get swarmed over there in that Indian culture and for someone like that, little kid from Brisbane to be invited is pretty cool. What, what, what are the fans like specifically? Like they, it, it looks pretty crazy over there, but what's it like as a player? Like are you got any stories of oh, – you're an absolute superstar over there, right? You're a superstar here, oh, mind you. The guys I, guys I play with are uh, like you go out for lunch with Glenn Maxwell or Dale Stain, we'll just go into a subway um, and we'll go in there and turn around. There'll be 400 people in the matter of 
four minutes. You know, so the, the security guard ends up locking the door and things like that. We'll get our subway, have our meal, and away you go. And, uh, mate, it's pretty cool. I suppose it's very humbling as well. You've got to learn patience over there uh, in, a, in a good way. Um, you know, they're just mad for cricket. They know my stats better than I know my stats. And um, they remember all these great memories, um, you know, which we might vaguely remember. They just absolutely love the sport. But without them, we don't have the game what it is today. So... Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, another family, the Adani family, they own the Golf Giants, who um, I just come back from Dubai with, and another great family opening up. They obviously get a couple lot of flack with uh, what's going on, um, but they they also do a lot of good things in the world. And people, I suppose, our nature, we're so quick to hit the negative uh, narrative of, of you know, whether it's a company or a person. Whereas I, I, something that I'm trying to do lately is just flip that on its head and let's actually see the good in people or you know, the conversation, whatever it is, a positive narrative. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's cool. Uh, you certainly you certainly don't get to see it inside like you have either. Like, I mean, we're we're just sitting watching, and you read what the newspapers say, but you <coughs> that's right. You know, yeah, and look at it. Um, what, what about the auction process, Linny? I mean, you've you've gone for some pretty staggering amounts. Twenty eighteen jumps off the page, almost one point nine million dollars at auction. What's that yeah. process like? I assume it's not like the um, AFL draft where they invite the, or, or is it? Like, do you get to go to them, or are you copping feedback from Australia? Where, where are you in these? Uh, things? So I'll, I've been in Australia the whole time. So I think, um, yeah, I was on a four-year deal with Kolkata, um, uh, or maybe two seventy, two eighty, or something. Um, not, not that's nothing to scratch your nose at, by the way. Like, I was over the moon, um, yeah. and then. I had a really good year, and then the auction come around. I was actually playing a game at the Gabba, a semi-final, Brisbane Heat versus Melbourne Renegades, and I had, had it on my live stream on my phone, and I'm going, and I'm doing an interview, and I hear Brandon McCullum's, and while I'm doing the interview with Howie um, behind the nets as we walk in, I can hear Brandon McCullum's name come out. I knew he was one or two before me, so I'm listening to Baz's price go through the roof, and I'm like, oh, I'm up, and I'll go into the stadium, and the security guard takes my phone, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I'm about to. So I'm in there and I start padding up to warm up, and uh, the coaches or managers allowed their, their phone, so they were actually watching it, and it was just going nuts. I was thinking, what, what's like, don't like, don't, they're taking the piss. Like, these boys are just jeeing me up. And then, yeah, hit, hit that number and it was over the moon. And, you know, it's, it's life changing. You know, there's no denying that. Um, and that's the opportunity that the IPL has provided and um, cricket has provided. So you're always grateful for that opportunity. But I just remember warming up in the nets and I was like shaking. Like I was just getting these you know, pretty easy half volleys and I was just shaking. I'm like, mate, we've got a semi final. Like, fucking head in the game. Like, you're worried about this thing. And while well, I'm feeling, you got the mic on going back up to the commentators. That's all they wanted to talk about. I'm like, I'm so like, conflicting interest here yes that's awesome but shit, i need to win this game for brisbane um but yeah like it's 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 a you know it's another viewing uh, opportunity for cricket you know to get new eyeballs uh to grow the game i've always said that's one thing that i want to do regardless if kids want to play first grade play domestic cricket play for australia how do we grow the game um, and I think we're doing a really good job of that at the moment. And, and it's, as you can see through women's, women's cricket, it's just, it's flying. So, um, I think the IPL's, you know, been huge from that.